Hey guys, how are you doing? Thanks for watching. Sorry it has been a bit since last time I posted a video on my channel, but life happened. I went to Belgium to Galaxy Studios to record an album. That was great. And then I had a few sessions to take care of, and then I had the new single out called Getaway, which you can find on Spotify and all the streaming services. So if you feel like having a listen, please do. It would make me really, really happy. In this episode, I want to talk about something that uh, stemmed out of a conversation I've had on Twitter with some people and we were discussing options to look after your sounds and uh, suppress resonances and hunt for a uh, build up of frequencies and obviously when it comes to that side of the business the hot name on the market today is a plugin called Sooth2 which you might be um, familiar with and um, this is not a hate video I love spectral compression i think it's a very powerful tool i think it's got its place in the production chain but i feel also that a lot of people buy this plugin that's very expensive and use it too much and um, every time you use that kind of process on your sound if you're not very 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 careful you might end up with a sound that's poorer that's simpler for the lack of a better word, that is not as deep and complex as it should be. Let me expand on this very briefly and very simply. Every sound that is not a simple sound like a sine wave has a main frequency called the fundamental, which is the one that gives the sound the pitch, and then a number of harmonics. And the action and interaction of all these elements creates resonances which make the texture and the sound of the sound in all effects. Now, when there's an over-representation of any of those frequencies that make up the sound, then you have a resonance which you might not like and you might, you might want to eliminate. In my experience as a mixing engineer, you never really have more than three, four treble frequencies in a sound. If you have more than those, then that's the time to break out the spectral compression to take care of the sound salvage it, make it good enough to fit in a mix. But sometimes I see some people using that kind of tool very deliberately on things like main vocals, just for the sake of saving time. And they end up with a sound that's poorer, that's simpler, that's thinner, and it's not as good as it could be if they put a bit more care in looking after it. So today, I'm gonna show you my workflow and my tools that I use to look for the bad resonances and how I get rid of them and what it means for the sound. Stick with me. There are many reasons why a sound might have an over-representation of a frequency. In the case of the things that we record in our living room, in our bedroom, especially vocals, these resonances are given by the room that's not treated, the quality of the microphone, the position of the microphone. All of these things can create energy buildups in portions of the sounds that we want to manage. I've just opened a logic session of a song called Falling Stars, which I co-wrote with this fantastic Norwegian artist called Tonal Holdra. Look her up because she's great. I recorded this vocal performance of her almost, oh my god, six years ago. And um, she sang great, but there and then I wasn't as experienced as I'm now about microphones and where to put them. So this is what I would call a problem take. There are some frequencies that poke out of the mix and um, unfortunately she's super busy at the moment, so I cannot get her to sing it again. Um, and also I really, really like her performance in this specific take. So that's the one I want to use. To my ear, 
This vocal is quite piercing, especially when she sings oh up there. And it has this very, very brittle, glassy quality to the voice, and that's probably down to the quality of my mic at the time. And I want to take care of it. Now, disclaimer. In this video, I will be using a plugin by a company called Eventide, which I love, 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 love. I'm not in touch with them. I'm not an endorser. They do not pay me. I just love what they do, and I use it because it works for my workflow. You can use anything else. And actually, you know what? To start with, I'll show you how to do this in Logic or any other DAW that you have, and you can use stock plugins. When you're hunting for resonances, what's important is that you bypass all of the compression and that you do it right at the top of the signal chain because you have to treat the raw sound. In this case, obviously, if you remove the compression, the sound is going to be lower in the mix. So let's compensate. Pull up your uh, stock EQ, grab a mid-range frequency, make the Q as narrow as you can. The Q is the width of the bell of the EQ. And boost it as much as you can, like that. Now, an EQ is a frequency-specific volume control. So what we're doing is basically we're blasting out just the content of this frequency range. My experience tells me that when you're recording vocals, the treble frequencies are always around 2K, 3K, 1.5. So that's the first place where we're going to look. The more experienced producers will just pull up an EQ, listen to the sound, and figure out by ear what the frequencies or the ballpark is. In this case, I'm going to show you the simplest technique possible, because obviously maybe you have to train your ears or you're not used to this. Quite a few people will do this technique by soloing the track and then sweeping the EQ. What I'm doing is actually I'm listening to in context, because I want to hear what frequencies are poking out of the mix. Now I'm going to play the track and I'm going to be sweeping up the EQ until I find the problem spots. You will hear it clearly because there's going to be a piercing frequency coming out of your speakers or your headphones. You should use headphones, by the way, if you're on a laptop or your phone, if you want to really listen to this. See, that's already one. So what you want to do is when you're there, you just notch it up. You make the volume negative and instead of having a peak, you have a dip. Now take another frequency note and again make the cue really narrow and then start hunting. Here's a tip. I find that if you have a problem frequency somewhere in the sound, there might be something you want to take care of at twice its frequency or around it. So for example, in this case, we have um, 1030, so 1K. Let's hunt around 2K and see if we find something that we dislike. Make a peek. See, we found it and eliminated it. Obviously, when you have a narrow Q filter that's blasting plus 18 dB and you sweep it, you will hear a lot of stuff that's wrong, it sounds weird, but only a few frequencies will truly bother you. And that comes from experience and doing it every day and practicing and practicing and practicing. Actually, we probably have another one to take care of. Ah, found it. Oh my god. Not yet.
that's how you look for and suppress those nasty resonances that make your sound brittle and unpleasant. And, you know, you can do it with the um, stock filters in your DAW, and you will do. What I don't like about this workflow is that if I'm using that kind of EQ where I have a visual representation of the spectrum, I end up mixing with my eyes and not my ears. So I like to use plugins that do not represent graphically the sound, but have virtual knobs that I can turn and use my ears. And in this case, I'm going to show you this new plugin that I just bought from uh, Eventide, and it's called EQ65. which is the replica of a studio unit by a company called Yuri, which is the same company that made the 1176 compressor. This plugin creates a very narrow Q filter with a boost, and then we'll solo it, meaning that you will only hear what's contained in the, in the Q range of the EQ. I'm going to show it to you in a minute. It's easier to see it and hear it than explain it. The curves it creates to look for the um, frequencies are very musical and make sense from a workflow point of view. It's very easy to look for the harsh frequencies and notch them off. You will notice that we hear only a small portion of the sound because we only hear what's contained in this very narrow peak. Let me demonstrate. When you found it, you just grab the same knob and turn it the other way around. Now that frequency has been notched off. I'm still dancing to the beat. I start to feel the heat. I'm I find that the cuts and the EQ slopes and action of this unit are very gentle. So sometimes I need to get two one after the other to accumulate the effect. I'm still dancing to the beat. Ah. See, for example, in that case, you can hear that in this, in this area, you have this prolonged resonant sound on top. You do not want that. Once you have found and notched out the resonances that you don't want, you can add the compression again and listen to in context. I still can hear a high frequency that bothers me. Like falling stars, we shine and fall apart. See, in this case, I have doubled the effect of the same notch because it wasn't enough.
obviously I will have to go through the whole song and listen carefully and see if there's something else I need to correct but I'm happy enough for now to say this is enough information for you to get started doing this I hope this is useful to you I hope it was entertaining if you have any opinions things to say things to add tell me if I've done it right tell me if I've done it wrong please use the comment section be nice to each other because we're all we're all friends and um, again thank you for watching I'll see you next time